Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be covering a couple of different things. Uh, the first is how to split up a mesh, because as we can see, this one is a single mesh. Uh, and then how to apply a collision to the individual parts uh, when you have multiple shapes. Uh, the reason that we're doing this is because if we just simply create a convex shape around this big giant mesh, we get something that looks a lot like a box, which makes all this white space in here collidable and we can't shoot through it, we can't do other stuff that we otherwise wouldn't want to be collidable. So we need to split it up. I'm going to be using Outfit Studio. Uh, it has a nice feature in there for masking out vertices and then splitting it off into separate shapes. So first up, get it loaded up. Uh, from here, uh, we're going to use the Mask tool. And I like to turn off the textures and the turn on the wire mesh so I can see where the vertices are. And we just need to start masking stuff out. Now, I'll turn the textures back on real briefly. Uh, I'm going to split this up so that the top section right here, which is wood, is one shape. And then the drawer part of it is going to be another shape as metal. Uh, the leg here just being one shape. The foot, one shape. The connecting bar down here is another shape. This foot's another shape. This post is one shape. The seat, we're going to end up splitting up into two. The reason being we're going to have the same problem as we had if it's a single mesh, whereas a convex uh, shape will encapsulate the entire seat and then block out the white space in the middle here. Um, because I've already done this before, it's going to be a little tricky, and I'll, I'll walk you through it when we get there. Uh, so we'll just start with the, the drawer up here. We just click and drag. We can see that it starts darkening the vertices. Once we've selected some of it, we can hit the D key and it'll start selecting nearby vertices. I hit it a couple times so it gets the majority of the mesh selected. Once you think you've got it all, go up to the Shape menu, Separate Vertices. And we'll call this uh, uh, I guess Top. Why not? Go ahead and hide that. And then we just do the same thing for the bottom drawer. And split that off. All right, so now we've got all those done. We'll hide them so that we don't get confused. Oops, and I missed something. So this is part of the uh, rear post. If I turn that back on, you can see that that's something I missed. Uh, we can either split that off into its own shape, or we can split it off and then join it back to the rear post. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we have the rear post and rear post two, so it's two separate pieces. And thankfully, up here in the shape menu, we have something for merge geometry. Since they originally came from the same thing, it's very easy to do this. Now I'm going to want to do um, this backwards, where it's going to merge the rear post two into rear post, and I'm choosing to delete the source, which would be the number two, so it leaves the number one. When we do that, we now have one shape again. Check our seat. Uh, now this is going to be a little tricky. Uh, the reason being is we start masking stuff out. It ends up selecting um, the outer metal because that's one type here. Get that too. And it leaves the, the, the wood part of the seats. Now that's fine if we wanted to split that out and just have separate shapes for the purposes of setting materials. Uh, but since we also want to deal with the, the convex shaping of the collision, um, we're going to have to do this a little different. Um, you could split this off uh, and then split up the metal part 
And that way you have the, the wood part of the seat is one, you have the metal part of the seat is one, and then you have the metal part of the back is one. And you could even split up the, the wood parts of the back. Uh, but then when you start applying the convex shapes, it gets a little funny and it doesn't work right. Uh, so we're just going to make this very simple. Uh, if you select too much, so like it's already selected all of the, the metal parts down here at the bottom, you can hold Alt and click and drag, and it will deselect some stuff. And we're going to come flip around to the bottom and make sure we deselect that as well. And I think we got enough there. So we'll split that off. And that'll be the seat back. Let's hide that. Looks pretty good. Rename, oops, rename this to seat bottom. And we'll hide that, bring back the back. Oh, and we see that we didn't get all of what we needed to get rid of. So we will select some more of that. That off into uh, seat bottom two. Make sure we got it all this time. Did. All right. And then we'll merge our geometry back in. Seat bottom two into the first one. Very good. And we'll turn everything back on so that we can make sure we got everything. All right. So the top part, very good. Drawer, front post, front foot. The connecting post, rear foot, rear post. And we'll take off the seat. And then we have the back. Loose stuff. Now we're ready to put this back into one file. Don't need to unhide everything when we go into export. I just do that as habit. And we'll name this one demo desk. I'm going to start numbering these because uh, there's a couple different things I want to show. And we don't need to save this. Actually, I'm going to leave that open for now, just in case we need to come back. So we can go ahead and open that up. And now we have separate shapes to deal with as we see fit. So for very simple things, uh, we'll just go ahead and start adding on convex shapes. Not going to mess with the settings here. We'll just get all the shapes in first. When we start adding the second one, it'll ask us uh, if we want to combine it into a list. Uh, choosing no replaces it. So if I say no, the shape that we have right here will get deleted. If I say yes, it converts it to a list and then adds it to the bottom. So we now have two of them. Let me just keep going for all the shapes. Afterwards, I'll go back and fix the materials. There's actually a couple of different things we need to fix. So now I'm going to go back and start fixing up all the materials. Uh, it's, this one's wood. It probably sounds like wood crate. And we want to change our radius to 0, uh, 0.01. That creates a much smaller bubble uh, inside uh, the CK, as we'll see later. I'll just quickly change that on all of these. All right, so all of the others we're going to make. Actually, we'll make the seat sound like wood.
This one will be middle. This one will be wood. And I probably could choose a better sounding wood than that, but this is a demo. Who cares? All right, so that is all set. We will go ahead and do our sanitize and reorder. And we are pretty much done. So there's uh, two different options that we could do here. Uh, we'll call this two with collision. Uh, we can either keep the split up shapes with the, the split mesh or uh, collisions. Or we can transfer this collision into our original file, which has the single uh, shape in there. If we wanted to do that, we can just simply come up here, select our collision object, come back to our original file, and paste it in. We just do a block copy. I'm sorry, copy branch. And then it would be a paste branch. Or you could control C, control V, and that's what it does. But as we can see now, we have our collision in here. Separated collision, but one base object. That's one option. Uh, the other option, well, actually, those are really the only two options there. Um, if you had a situation where, let's say you had a split up uh, nodes for your shapes, let's say your uh, your seat. Let's uh, actually split this up. Uh, let's see, the seat back is 39. So let me mock this up really quick here. So let's say you had the uh, seats as a separate nine-node, and I don't want to go through all the trouble of moving all that. Oh, I'll just skip ahead in the video. OK, so I've got an example set up here. So I've removed the collision, so we can pretend like we had some shape or list set of shapes where we had something static, and we'll pretend like the seat was animated where it rotates or something like that. You would need separate collision for the animated parts outside of the collision that would be for the static parts. So you would have two nodes. Um, I'm not going to go making a whole bunch of collision nodes to demonstrate this, but we can pretend that this one here is the collision. Or, uh, I'm sorry, the animation. We'll just uh, give it a name so that we think that's what it is. And we'll call this one static, just to make it easier for demonstration. So if if you had something that needed to be animated, you could just, again, same thing, create the shapes. That creates the... Uh, collision underneath the node for that branch. So now we can do that again for this one. And we now have just two that are under the branch for our animation. We can then do the rest of them over here. And I think that's all of them. So now we have two sets of collision nodes. And I'll show that they both compile. They both show up in the creation kit just fine. Uh, but first, we need to sanitize and reorder. Oops, and I probably, oh, I'm not going to worry about setting all the types. I'm not going to actually go use this. All right. This one there. 
right, so if we go ahead and uh, get our butt into Elric, and we have our two with collision and our three with collision. Put those in our game folder so we can put them into creation kit and take a look at them. And we can see we've got our nice collision on it. It's nice as a big wide open white space area. A little bit of white space being taken up with this one, but unless you wanted to go uh, splitting off m more of this to the, the bottom and less to the back, that's the only way to fix that. And if we look at the other one that we did, um, as, where the, the seat had its own branch with its own collision, and then the rest had its own collision. Now you'll notice that this has a much bigger collision box, and it's got a, a big bubble around everything. That is because I didn't change the radius uh, in NIFScope. If we go back to our original here and take a look at this one. Um, the radius is 0 0.05. We want to change that to the 0 0.01. Uh, that makes it much closer to the object itself without creating such a big bubble on it. And that's all I got for you in this video.